Do you struggle to find time to work on your side hustle? Your personal life has already been super hectic and then you also have a highly demanding nine to five and by the time you have any space to yourself, you're just feeling <sighs> exhausted. Or maybe you already started working on your side hustle, but now you're kind of struggling to really stay engaged in your nine to five while running your business on the side. How can you do it all without burning out? What's your secret? And that's the number one question I get from my community. So I thought I'm just going to make a video about it. In this video, I want to walk you through all my prioritization systems that I created that really catapulted my productivity to the next level and literally multiplied my time and my income. And you're going to learn all of this in this video today. Let's get right into it. Step number one, reframe the stories you tell yourself. I recently had dinner with my husband when I was trying to solve some technical bugs for my nine to five job. It was a crazy night. And I was complaining big time how, you know, I haven't had the chance to really work on my side hustle that week and how it affected my mental health. And my husband, while he was like listening to me complaining, then said, Fabi, you know what? You wouldn't actually be able to do your side hustle if you didn't have your income from your tech job. And he was absolutely right. This is why I really want to encourage you to see your nine to five kind of as your investor of your future. Because if you don't have a positive attitude toward your job, you're gonna have a really hard time succeeding in your side hustle because when money stops flowing from your full-time income, you're likely to just press the pause button on your side hustle. Step number two, work backwards and define your big goals. I used to have a mile long travel list and I'm a zero or inbox kind of woman. <laughs> So I love the feeling of just checking things on my list and maybe you can relate. But funny enough, chasing that mile long to-do list makes me super, super duper unproductive. So what I do every single year is I define one goal for each of these three areas. I have my personal goal, which this year is to run a marathon. I have a side hustle goal, which is to monetize my YouTube channel. And I have a third goal, which is in my full-time job to get promoted to become senior director in product. I actually break them down into quarterly goals and I write the quarterly goals on a big sticky note. And what I do is I have them really visible every single day whenever I do work. I can't stress enough how important that is because you really gotta stay focused on one thing and one thing only. Speaking of, there's this amazing book called The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan. I get you the link in the description below. Really read this. This has been the biggest game changer in my side hustle journey. Now, the most common question I get from my side hustle community is, but how, Fabi, how do you stay engaged or even get promoted while you're working on your side hustle? That's wild. Imagine for a second that you have a huge business bringing in millions of dollars in a year from now. As the CEO of that company, what is most important to you? To have a profitable business with a phenomenal team that actually grows the company over time. That's really what it is. Being in a leadership position in e-commerce myself, I really measure performance based on what I refer to as the RCL formula. Revenue, cost, leadership. Companies want to increase their profits, always. So simply said, you can do that through two main things. You either increase sales and or decrease costs. The question really becomes, how else can you inspire others to do the exact same thing? That's called leadership. Think about stakeholder management, creating high performing teams. That's the how. So in your role, what can you do to increase revenue? What can you do to reduce costs? And how can you demonstrate leadership and motivate the people around you to increase revenue or decrease costs? That's literally it. And here's the thing, with every company I've worked for, I always keep a business impact tracker. Like what are the things that I help deliver or my team to help deliver? And what was the business impact? So by the time 360 reviews fall in, our favorite time of the year, you don't have to do any work because it's already done. And literally, I tell you, it's such a game changer because everyone asks me always for this template. I actually have a link to the template down below that you can just download for free. Also. It is always a good thing to ask your boss how success is actually measured in your role. What does it take for you to actually get to the next level? And that should be really part of your goal setting for your nine to five. Step number three, break down your goals. 
The key to hitting your goals is to really make them small. Let's say for your side hustle, your goal is to add 250 subscribers to your email list, which is a really great first goal for your side hustle because the average return on email, believe it or not, is $36 for every dollar spent. So simply put, you invest $1 and you receive $36 in return. So much to emails, dad, right? Next, you're going to brainstorm solutions. So how can I achieve that goal? To grow your email list, it could be, can I give something for free, like an ebook? Can I reach out to my email list and ask for referrals? So what I do is I brainstorm all of these things, what I could do, and I usually use a free whiteboard tool called Mirror. And then I kind of work backwards and think about which one will have the most impact, but also the lowest amount of effort. And once I have all of these different tasks, I really break them further down to tasks that are 30 to 50 minutes long. And you will know why in a second. This is your goal activity backlog. That's how I call it. And here's why it's so key. Have you ever been super overwhelmed by a huge project where you just didn't know where to start? That is because it's impossible to tackle any big goal without chunking it down into small pieces. Okay, next step four, structure your day. One of my favorite quotes from the book, Essentialism is, if you don't prioritize your life, someone else will. It's so true because when I started out with my sad hustle, I mean, I used to wake up, I would check my work Slack and my work emails. I would hit the gym and then, you know, get a smoothie during my first Zoom meeting. And as soon as my last meeting ended at 4 p.m., I would just close my nine to five computer and then open my side hustle computer and work for hours. And then I had a very limiting belief. I had to really change as an entrepreneur. It doesn't matter how many hours you put into your side hustle or even in your nine to five, to be honest, if you don't get any results, it doesn't matter. I used to have a boss who'd measure the contribution to the company based on how many hours you were online. Yes. Wild. If that's your boss, it's time to look for a new job because your company is measuring success the wrong way. And once you understand that, you need to do the following things next. And this is going to be fun. I'm so excited for you. Step number five, eliminate. In this book, Essentialism, there's this quote that I love. An essentialist produces more by removing more instead of doing more. Every Sunday, I look at my work calendar for the next week and I look at my goals that I have hanging right on my wall and I literally decline all the meetings that don't contribute to my nine to five goal for the year. For instance, if my success is measured by finishing one project, why? Why would I attend meetings that I'm not even contributing to and that don't move the needle toward that goal? Now I want you to think about meetings that you've attended where your camera was off. Decline those because what's the point? Also, every meeting I look at, I always think about what is the business case behind that initiative? And if I don't think it's gonna be big, I'll decline it. Now you might say, Bobby, it's all nice that you say that, but there are certain stakeholders I have to meet with. And you're absolutely right. It falls under the L bucket, leadership. How do you deliver results? Okay, so now I'm so excited. I tell you one of my most amazing tricks of all time, creating a stakeholder map. Who are the people that are going to review your performance and think about what gives them sleepless nights? Like ask them in one-on-ones and write it all down on your stakeholder map. And also really figure out what are the dynamics behind each of the stakeholders and who influences who. I love to draw like errors so that I know that the person who has the most errors going out are actually the key people that you need to build a relationship with. That's when you then set up one-on-one -on -one time with them and literally decline all the other one-on-ones or make them at least bi-weekly or monthly. Step number six, optimize your nine to five schedule. So next thing I do is I move all my meetings around in my nine to five. I really try to create uh, time blocks and ideally I want to try to do it based on topic. So I always have heads down time for my side hustle in the morning, but then I also have heads down time for my nine to five and also ideally in the morning when my battery is still full. I always set one big goal for the day. And what I do is I literally pick an activity from my goal activity backlog and I just try to knock that out 
first thing in the morning because by the time the afternoon slump comes in hot, I don't have to worry about it. I'm done for the day. If your meetings right now are like all over the place, no wonder you can't get anything done. Because according to a study conducted by Atlassian, you lose 40% of your productivity every time you switch context. Crazy, right? Remember, you get paid by delivering results and not by attending meetings. Also, question the length of the meetings. I'm really a huge fan of 15 minute check-ins, especially when it comes to status progress. It makes such a huge difference for your calendar. Step number seven, first things first. So I personally always have three goals for the day. And what I do is I write them down in my planner. I have one goal for my side hustle, I have one goal for my nine to five, and I have a personal goal. Once you have cleaned up your entire calendar on Sunday, now the real fun part starts. And if you're doing something else right now in this moment, because you have a thousand tabs open, I really want you to come back to this video right now, because this is one of the most important parts of the video, because it literally transformed my entire life and really helped me not burn out and feel exhausted by the end of the day. So the secret is before I hop on to any Zoom meeting for my nine to five, I always, 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 always prioritize what's most important to me first. My health, time with my loved ones, my side hustle, always. So the night before I actually schedule my next day. So, you know, if I wanna spend time for my side hustle or I wanna go to the gym or I wanna go on a run or, you know, wanna spend time with my husband, I literally time box that into my schedule. That way I prioritize what is most important to me first thing in the morning. And for you, it could be spending time with your kids or you know, time to journal or meditate, whatever brings you joy. By the way, if you don't know what brings you joy, you gotta check out this video that I created last week. I think you really like it. Anyhow, just a side note. So now you might have a huge aha moment because we broke all of these goals down to less than one hour chunks in your goal activity backlog, right? If you're done with your side hustle first thing in the morning, and then you're also done with your full-time job, guess what happens next? You have the entire rest of your day just to do what the heck you want to do. Yes, you can watch Netflix without feeling any guilt. You can have quality time with your loved ones. You can take a bath, you can read, you can just chill, whatever you want to do. And when you prioritize your needs first, you're gonna show up actually way happier in your nine to five. And I can tell you, people start to notice that. I refer to it as a side hustle glow. Okay, now it's time to actually do the work. Step number eight. So if you're like me and you have the attention span uh, of a squirrel, the question really is, how can you stay focused on one thing without getting distracted? That is the question. My secret tips are always learned from the best productivity gurus in the world. So I learned this amazing technique from the book, High Performance Habits by Brian Burchard. I will make sure to leave a link uh, down in the description below. So what I really love about this book is you have a 60 minute slot and you set an intention for that 60 minutes. But what you do is you actually just work 50 minutes, heads down, without a break, without any distractions. And then for the last 10 minutes, you do whatever you want. You can go outside, you can walk your dog, you can scroll on Instagram, it doesn't matter. And I really want you to make sure that all your tabs are closed and your phone is maybe even in a different room. I sometimes put it in the garage, game changer by the way. And just make sure to set a timer and work on that one thing. Cal Newport actually calls it deep work and it makes all the difference. Really, this is also a great book. This is why it's so key to not have so many of your meetings just spread out throughout the day because you can't get into that deep work mode. Do you see how all of it kind of connects and makes sense now? Now, you might be saying, I always have to work on weekends and this is not gonna work for me. I used to be in the same position. The real question really is, did you actually get enough deep work during the week to immerse yourself into one context without switching context. Based on my experience, when I used to work on weekends, the answer usually was no, I didn't do that. Even for my side hustle, what I do is like, I block one day where I just do writing content. I do another day where I just produce YouTube videos. Like I batch produce like six videos 
at a time. So I don't have to set up like the lighting, the microphone, everything all the time. And the next step, step number nine is to review. Every weekend you should always figure out did you make progress toward the goals? Like, did you accomplish everything that you wanted to accomplish? Or were there things where you didn't accomplish it? I think as Peter Drucker said, you can't manage what you can't measure. And I know when I find myself sitting on the couch watching Netflix at night and I'm feeling super drained and exhausted, I can tell you that it's my indicator that I didn't prioritize what was most important to me first thing in the morning. That's when I adjust my schedule for the following week. Also, I want you to know if you're like me, don't let perfectionism get in your way. Managing emotions is the really hardest part about time management. And I'd actually say that time management is emotion management. There are days when I don't do anything for my side hustle. Happens. Especially when I, you know, have to travel internationally, it just throws me off my schedule. And when I do so, I used to really shame myself big time. And then I shame myself for shaming myself. My therapist, by the way, said that's the thing. If you get off, just commit to getting back into it and really just start small until you gain momentum. So for instance, what I would do is I would just work for 10 minutes on my side hustle in the morning until I just get back into that routine. Because again, it's just really key to have small wins to gain that momentum again. <laughs> by the way, there is this phenomenal book called Atomic Habits by James Clare that I think you absolutely love because it talks a lot about really creating small habits and really gaining positive momentum when you have very small habits. I might just write a book review about this one soon. If you now feel so much more empowered to build your side hustle of your dreams or really just gain momentum on the side hustle that you already have, you just make sure one more thing is right you make sure you have the right side hustle idea. Because don't get into that vending machine business that everyone's talking about on TikTok. I really can't stress it enough. Side hustles, they're not like a one size fits all solution. If you want to find a side hustle idea that truly excites you and you know that really fits with your lifestyle, because that's what a lot of people forget, make sure to check out this video. I will make sure to put a link here. In this video, I share three simple steps on how you can find your perfect side hustle idea. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything else that you're struggling with when it comes to balancing your side hustle, you know, your nine to five and your social life, because I really want to make sure I get all your questions covered. And also make sure to subscribe to my channel uh, so that I can really support you on your entrepreneurial journey.